it's time to look outside the box. And we can take simple actions, simple actions that can make a really have a huge result. We can be on a plant-based diet, right? We can take some exercise. We can make sure we get good rest. We can make sure we're laughing or that we're happy. And so with that, I'm going to introduce Gerard. Good evening, everybody. Can you be okay with this microphone? Yeah, yes. yeah. As I get started, very, very important to say this, okay? Uh, Earth Save Miami, Earth Save, here in Miami, not like last night with her Broward County, which makes no sense, but okay. <laughs> Miami, Earth Save in Broward County, please wait Miami now. Like, we went to one in Broward now for, for three years now with Tap Right. But anyway, it's really nice that they do take the time to put this event on. Since I like applause, I like a, I'm a applause junkie. Let's have a big applause for uh, Jeff and Estella from this event. <laughs> and since it is Saturday night, and we're all adults, we have to have something better we can do. Movies, dinner, well, party, whatever. It's really good that you came here to find out about another way. You know, more information to make you a better person. I think you owe yourselves a big round of applause. Let's hear it for yourselves. As, uh, as the women here will appreciate, and the men will certainly understand, uh, I have to acknowledge something that makes my life work. I'm going to share a lot of good ideas with you, my story and information, but what's most important is this. I have a secret weapon that doesn't really play into you guys, but for me. My secret weapon you just heard from her. Let's hear from Jermaine, please. <laughs> well, that ensures sure they have a ride home. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, she touched on a lot of stuff. I'll give you all the uh, finer details of things. Back in uh, 1986, uh, life was okay. I started a company. I was selling wholesale fruits and vegetables in Long Island, New York. You might hear in my voice. You might say, I'm in New York. I've been down here a long time. When you take the man out of New York, you can't get the New York out of the man. So I still sound like I just left. But uh, I am a New Yorker. I had a nice little company there in New York. Things were going very good. But I had a lot of stress in my life. And as I'm going to touch on, stress is a really unholy mess. You don't want stress in your life. Life was okay, business was going good. I was working about 17 hours a day. A little bit much to say the least. Working very hard, one day I woke up with a searing burning pain in my left ear down my left arm. I said, this ain't right. Then the next day I had double and triple vision. So I knew something was wrong. Went to a uh, neurologist, he recommended I get an MRI. You know, like an x-ray, you know what that is? Had an MRI done, went there, did the MRI. It was so, it was so long ago, MRIs were so new, and uh, I didn't really have insurance. When I had the MRI done, I said, okay, thank you, what do I owe you? And uh, they were like, well, your insurance pays for it. I was in a cash-based business, so I had a lot of cash on me. So I'm thinking, oh, so it's $1,700. I just counted out, I know, they almost fainted, they don't receive cash. So I paid them for the MRI, saw the doctor about a week later, he said, uh, I'm sorry to tell you, you have multiple sclerosis. I said, and what's that? He said, it's a chronic, incurable, neurological disorder. I said, oh. So that means that your mild sheath in your body, is, your mild sheath covers your nerves, it doesn't really, it evaporates, it's gone. So all the antibodies in your body will attack the nerves. Therefore, since your body is running electricity on nerves, you know, it's gonna get a lot worse. I said, oh, okay, great. I was in such shock from the information. All I could come out with was, hey doc, can you or your secretary validate my parking? And I had no one to do with that. I was like, so, whoa, well, thank you very little. So, uh, like Jermaine said, there's, there's no treatment, there's no cure at that point. Goodbye and good luck. But due to the fact that it passed, and about a week and 10 days later, I was back to normal, working my 17 hours a day, uh, the diagnosis was a doc doc diagnosis. I lived for the uh, next 20 years on the river in Egypt, denial. Oh, I ain't got involved with denial, I don't really care, no big deal. Everything is fine with that. Life or not, I met a woman. We got married. I said, hey, you think we'll live in Florida? She said, yeah. I said, well, why? She said, like everybody else, we retire. I said, well, what if you don't live that long? She said, what do you want to live there now? I said, good idea. So I sold the company that I had started, moved to, moved to Florida, and uh, I moved to Boca Raton, Florida. People ask me, gee, what do you live in Boca Raton? I said, I'm a New York Jew. We're all, all Jewish New York. So, that's, it's all like that. There's no difference. But anyway, uh, if and when you have any questions, if you want to share something with you, 
Hold your questions till the end. I'm not going to run away. I'll answer all your questions. And speaking of which, I see on the, on the tables a lot of good paperwork. Feel free to take the papers. All my protocols on the paperwork that I gave you. So yeah, take it right there. Back, back to my back to my story. Moved, moved to Florida in uh, in 1992, very beginning. Knowing myself, I'm an all-in kind of guy. Meaning, once I decided to move to Florida, I bought a house. I didn't rent the place looking for a job. I bought a house where I got it. Moved, moved to Florida in 1992. Uh, everything was okay. I had a couple of kids, had twins. Life went on. Business was uh, life was good. Found a couple of good jobs to work at there. Things were okay. The marriage didn't last. The kids are great. Uh, the MS was fine. And in around uh, 2006, uh, language notwithstanding, the shit at the fan. MS gets worse. Sorry, little kids. Uh, the shit at the fan. Things got worse. Uh, MS got worse and worse and worse. I knew in 2005 things were getting a lot worse. I could feel it. And then in 2006, I had to physically stop working. I couldn't do it anymore. As a matter of fact, the guy I was working with said, well, we have a choice right now. If you're going to trip, fall, and sue me, you know, you're going to get really hurt. So you might as well just get out of here. So he didn't really find me. He just made a good suggestion. I don't work for anymore. Life was different in 2006. I took the uh, conventional route. I, uh, I saw a neurologist. I saw a neurologist who was I was like, a doctor makes money on my sickness. I saw a neurologist who said, yes, to me, but I tried this drug. So I tried this drug. It didn't work. The side effects of the drug were a lot worse than the MS itself. Tried that drug, and said, this ain't working. Tried another drug. That didn't work at all. You know what, the MS was bad, I was doing a lot of nothing. Laying in bed, a good day was counting the ceiling, throwing me into the ceiling fan, going round and round. Doing a lot of nothing. Uh, I tried another drug, and that didn't work. And then in the 2007, the doctor said, these drugs aren't working. I recommend you don't take them anymore. Which is probably the only accurate thing they actually said, but don't do these drugs anymore. I stopped taking this drug in 2007. 2008, 2009, I spent virtually in bed. A good day was going, being up out of bed for about an hour or two, getting out of the house, doing a little errand locally, such like that. Okay. If you've ever had fatigue, that was my biggest symptom. If you know what fatigue is, it's really hardcore stuff. It's a light switch, meaning like the lights on, lights off. Everything's good, everything's good, the fatigue kicks in, you gotta go later. It's just really hardcore. Life was hardcore 2008, 2009. Doing a lot of laying in bed, doing a lot of nothing. And now, <clears throat> think, okay, great, this is really wonderful. I'm not getting anywhere, getting worse and worse and worse. Quite literally, November 25th, 2009, was the last time I had any animal products. I had turkey for Thanksgiving in, uh, in 2009. Uh, I literally woke up the next day and said, that's it, I'm a vegetarian. Became a vegetarian, I'm laying in bed thinking, say, okay, great, this is a new thought. I'm going to do something different. If I keep doing what I've always been doing, I'm going to keep getting what I've always got. Keep getting sicker, keep getting worse and worse and worse, doing absolutely nothing. Ah, if I do something different, I might get a different result. I said, ah, vegetarian, that's a good thing. Then. What else can I do differently? Well, I heard about uh, different types of uh, massages and I had a good response to my fascia release. So I wanted to try that. And also, whenever the, car, whenever the doctor says, uh, don't do something, I'm doing it. Because it's been my experience that they have no idea what they're talking about. Whatever they recommend is to benefit their own money. That's all. The doctor said, oh, oh, don't do chiropractic. I said, no. I said, chiropractic is a doctor with nerves to the body. I have a neurological disorder. It seems fresh to see a chiropractor. Said, oh, well, this is your own risk. Said, okay, doc, have a good day. So do I. He also recommended that I uh, not do electrical stimulation, ease them, where they attach the nerve, attach electrodes to your body and re-stimulate and wake up the nerves. I said, oh, this is cool. So I said, okay. They said, no, do it. I'm doing it. So at the end of 2009, very beginning of 2010, I'm now a vegetarian. I'm not seeing doctors. But I'm seeing a chiropractor. I'm, I'm going to see a physical therapist with a protocol that I designed. We'll do that story in a minute. And of course, maintaining my decent attitude. All right. uh, the protocol I designed at the uh, physical therapist, give you an idea how, I'll use the word corrupt, you know, medicine is, okay? I, uh, I had a protocol that I knew would work for me. Myofascial release, ease them, and walking. I knew that would work for me. Watch that, try it. Call the, call the physical therapist and say, say, here's my protocol, this is what I want to do. They said, no, it doesn't work that way. So what do you mean? Said, uh, you get a script from your doctor, Medicare will pay for it, will you come here, will you give you our protocol? protocol. Said, no, 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 my body, my protocol. Said, uh, it doesn't work that way. Said, yeah, it doesn't work for you, goodbye. 
I called six places until I finally, finally found the place. I said, yeah, we'll give it a try. <laughs> I believe in uh, calm and life. The place I found was three miles away. <laughs> so I pretty well think that was like a meant to be kind of thing. So I found a place to, to do my protocol. I looked around for a chiropractor. Again, thinking about how life works. I found a chiropractor's office, and the chiropractor himself was too busy. What chiropractors do is they'll lease out a table to another chiropractor to do adjustments to cover his overflow. So this chiropractor adjusted me, and we were chatting, and uh, she said, gee, based on your accent, where are you from? I said, I'm uh, from New York, obviously. She said, where am I? I said, Long Island. She said, have you ever heard a place called Oyster Bay, Long Island? I said, yeah, I got the Oyster Bay High in 2075. She said, do you know a guy named Gerard Check Early? I said, uh, I still talk to him. We were in second grade together. We were Cubs got together. He said, he worked me in San Francisco. It's like, I hear you. I think there's the right chiropractor. She's two miles away from him. So now I had the right chiropractor. I believe they were all within all the book from right near my blog. Like, this is great. 2000, uh, 2010, 2011 were really good years. Everything was great. Things were rolling along just fine. Physical therapy, I started to get up, move about, getting out of the house. Uh, the chiropractor really, I started seeing the chiropractor twice a week. Worked out very well, seeing the physical therapist. Then in 2012, a friend of, uh, a friend of Jermaine said, why don't you go to West Palm Beach and try this place of pottery's? I was like, what's that? One of these uh, new age health retreat kind of things? He said, nah, just go up there and check it out. I was like, okay, great. Bunch of people meditating, hugging trees, eating grass, I, I had no idea. But instead I went there. 60 beautiful acres, lush, beautiful stuff. Physical property inside, professional people, jackets and ties, no, not jackets, professional people, very nice place. Went there, <clears throat> and it was my birthday, March 19th of uh, 2012. Went there, said, okay, great, it's my birthday. Let's, let's have some birthday dinner here. It's up. Oh, what kind of food you guys have? Well, it's vegan food. It's like, no problem. Uh, I'm already a vegetarian. He said, no, you don't get it. He yeah. said, get what? He said, well, yeah. oh. He said, all, all vegans are vegetarians, but not all vegetarians are vegans. I said, what's the distinction? He said, uh, well, you don't eat animal products. I said, right, no chicken, no beef, no fish. He said, what about eggs and dairy and cheese? I said, oh, he said, we don't eat that here. I said, oh, okay, great, let's give that a try. So I tried the vegan food, and I said, this is pretty good. Not like everything else in my life, when I make a decision, that's the decision. Became vegan that day. So 2012 was a terrific year. It was so good a year, that 2013, my birthday rolled around again. I said, I'm going to go back to Apocalypse and check them out. Took a ride back up to Apocalypse and said, hey, I recognize some faces. This is cool. Been a vegan for a while. Everything I'm feeling really good. Everything's working out well. I said, uh, you know, I was, I was born in New York, but it's you know, a little cold. It's March. It's wintertime. I said, uh, you got no hot food here. What's up with that? I said, well, it's raw vegan. I said, raw? What do you mean raw? I said, well, what was the last time you cooked lettuce? I said, good, good point. Plant-based diet. You don't cook lettuce. I said, try this, it's all cold. Then he explains to me what the difference between cold food and hot food. The, the difference between cold food and hot food is that most people don't get to live a full life because their body, physically, is so busy digesting hot food. Forget that it's not really digestible, that it takes all their strength. The, law, the rule of thumb with that is that to digest cold food only takes 20% of your body's available energy. Hot food takes a full 80% of your body's available energy to digest it. So why eat high food? So back to my story. I tried the raw vegan diet. And this was pretty tasty. Lots of sprouts, lots of salads, very good stuff. <clears throat> What's fun about that is that uh, I've, let, I've figured out since that time there's three types of food. One, things we don't like, dead disease animals. Two, crustacean food, which is nice lettuce and broccoli stuff, but it's already dying. It's already been cut. Or living food, plant-based diet, specifically sprouts. If you haven't tried sprouts, I wholeheartedly recommend it. On the paper from the table, or back in the table there, is my whole protocol. Heavily sprout-based diet. Sprouts is a load of electrolytes. Sunflower sprouts are the most protein on any diet. It's very good stuff. <coughs> Again, back to the story. So, 2013, I became a, a raw vegan. Life was really good. Now, moving that forward a few days, March 19, 2012, 2013, I became a raw vegan. 12 days later, I went to my physical therapist who I've been seeing for a few years, and it was Casey. I went to see her, my normal appointment there, and I told her I'm now a raw vegan. I said, uh, you know, Casey, it's, it's time that I walk. She's always right. You're always cutting stuff up. You're walking right now with your cane. I said, I said, right, that's my protocol. I walked. 
time that I walk without my king. He says, hey, you, you're going to miracle since you started. You're not going to stand in your way. You want to go to your king? Go for it then. So 12 days into becoming royal vegan, for the first time in seven years, I pushed my king aside and said, okay, here, see, I'm going for it. I said, have a good time. So I got up and I walked 20 feet, no king, all by myself for the first time in seven years. Since I became a royal vegan. Quite the emotional. <laughs> responsibility for your own health and well-being. Since that time, life has been wonderful. Uh, I'm now walking about 150 feet all by myself. In the pool, about 350 feet, two or three times a week. I'm loving being a raw vegan. Uh, you didn't tell them how, how, how your fatigue left. How, how your fatigue left after you came Well, what I want, what you guys remind me saying is that it's almost self-evident. Is that 12 days after becoming a royal vegan, or she likes to the story, that uh, around about 12 days after becoming a royal vegan, um, well, see, a couple days before that story I just told, we were out, out and about, and uh, we got out in the morning, and I know we were taking a nap in the afternoon. We were out in the afternoon, and when went dinner time. I said, can I take a nap tonight? She said, no, we're going all day. I said, I have no more fatigue. All my fatigue left within two weeks of becoming a royal vegan. So when I when I say to you that I'm living proof, yeah, I'm living proof. It happened to me, it can happen to you. Becoming a royal vegan was the smartest thing I could ever do. I can only wish that I knew then what I know now. Just that simple. <clears throat> I physically go to the YMCA say two or three days a week. Used to be, so that's the part of it. Used to be when I went to the YMCA, I go once, maybe twice a week. Whenever it's making it for a schedule, I wear a life preserver. Uh, they use the lift to put me into the pool, um, that type of thing. Go in and get very tired. <clears throat> then I said, you know what? I'm going to uh, stop wearing the life preserver since she's right next to me anyway. So I stopped wearing the life preserver. Then I said, you know what? I'm walking physical therapy. There's a nice guardrail on the outside. I'm going to walk into the pool. So no life preserver. I'm walking into the pool. I get a kick when I go to the one I'm on the wife's here. And I drop my scooter up, and I get up, and I walk the 20 feet into the pool. I like looking at people's face, like, what are you doing? This guy's been sweet, walking, wow. Then I decided, you know what? She's got work to do, let us stay home and take it easy. So now I physically go to the website all by myself two or three times a week. Now, in as much as that sounds pretty good, it is, but also the hard part for me is showering and getting dressed. That's the real hard part about getting dressed. So I look at it right now that since at that time, I don't have multiple sclerosis. I see no value whatsoever in getting another MRI done. I don't need a medical clinical proof to have MS. That's not important to me. People say to me, uh, well, gee, if you don't have MS, uh, why are you still using a scooter? I have uh, two good answers for that. Well, number one, I'm an American. I'm lazy. If I use a scooter, why not? I'm a scooter around. What that? But also, and it's a more serious answer, is that uh, even though I am, I am and have been asymptomatic now for four years, my baseline is different from anybody else's baseline. By the time I got my stuff together and changed my diet and found the right protocol, I'd already had MS for 25 years. I was already 55 years old. So therefore, not having MS is all well and good, but it beat the crap out of my body. So that's why I'm fine with what, what, what I can do. Now I'll bring it more to the end. Uh, I'd like to say that right now, by being healthy and having my faculties working, I get to work on my bucket list. I have a really great bucket list. Now life is I can go talk and be happy and do whatever I want to do. I have a great bucket list. Dev is in. It's the same thing every day. I wake up and cross off the first thing on the list. You know what it is? My bucket list has one thing. Wake up. <laughs> if I wake up, that's a beautiful thing. Because if you ask doctors, men diagnosed with multiple sclerosis before they turn 30 as I was, do not live past 52 years old. The fact that I just celebrated 60, it's a miracle. The fact that I'm alive, great. That, that's a bucket list that I meant that I'm alive. That's why it empowered me to support and talk to you guys and say, this is what's happening. I can do it too. Don't believe the doctors. Things I like to say now, only because I, uh, I brought my little problem over with me here. I have your, uh, you're making the right time to use <laughs> So I have your, a piece of paper. There are two dimes on this piece of paper, or a pair of dimes. I'm going to shift the pair of dimes over to here. Yes, that's a paradigm shift. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so paradigm shift. 
And we think a paradigm shift is what I've talked about here. By me, by me being different, not listening to uh, not modern doctors, it's like military intelligence, modern doctors, obviously more on a desk. Uh, but, but, <laughs> thanks a lot. But, but it's very true. You might think, well, think about it. This is the part of the conversation I'd like to really share, and we don't like this part. Think what the doctors say. They get a whopping four hours of nutritional study when they're in college. That's it. Think about the idea that in an already distressed body, the recommending you take a toxin of medicine and think you actually get better. That doesn't make any sense. It's like fighting a war thinking you get peace. It's like having a drink to celebrate your sobriety. I mean, it's like having an orgy to celebrate your celibacy. It's like you can't do the exact opposite of something to uh, I think that it's actually going to happen. It won't happen that way. Doctors, you know, modern medicine, okay. Dr. Michael Gregg was on the air cruising with this one on there. He has a great quote. He said, the number one killer of people right now is heart disease. That, that's been true for about 35 years now. So the, the known cause of heart disease in people is eating animal products. The number one killer in animals is man killing them so you can eat them. Perfect karma. We kill them. They kill them. Per perfect karma. That's the, that's what we're up against here. There's no money in a cure. We all get well, there's no more business, no more doctor business. Big Pharma, 2015, now with their numbers, not my numbers, they spend more money on marketing and advertising than they did in research and development. Again, their numbers. <laughs> Going back to Dr. Michael Gregor, right, the number one killer of people is some form of cancer. On that same list, number eight, is medical malpractice misdiagnosis. Think about that. Right? Big pharma. People are hooked on, on drugs right now. Most of the drugs, what's oxycodone? It's illegal heroin, that's all it is. It's loaded with opium. Let's get in the, the, in the minds of the world about of good health. Let's keep them sick, keep them dependent, keep them pain. That's all they care about, keep them addicted. It cannot keep, the system got to support itself. I encourage and empower you guys to example, and use me as an example. Go to a vegan, take care of yourself, make the choice. The things that I learned like in the pocket is just in life. You only start to get better when you take complete and full responsibility for your own health and well-being. When you say some doctor, some pill is going to fix you, that can't happen. You can fix you, nothing else can fix you. Now that I have put up a fix to myself, like I live a life of purpose, passion. It's a beautiful thing to realize that I'm giving to life, life is taking care of me. My, my purpose is to talk to people and empower them. I, I do it passionately. Drop down from Bogey today, just talk. I suggest and encourage you guys, nice young lady here, go to a vegan, stay with the diet. It's a good plan. Nice people, right? I, uh, I don't have a whole lot more to say, no big finish. I, I thank you for listening. Alternative therapy, which I had no big deal. 
that I can't endorse it, not that AMA approved. I said, well, I gotta respect that, I guess, by just the family itself. That's what I said. But as a human being, as a man, would you like to know what I've done to get better? He said, same thing, I can't really support, you know, because it's been up and approved. So the better I did, Doc. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, how can a human being not have this whole practice of people with MS? How can you actually see my results and not want to know more about them? Wow. That tells you what you and want to know. And this guy, and this, this doctor, he's, he's like, come in. Wow. If you call the MS Society and Paul Lowe, they'll say, I have MS. Uh, who says it? You'll see that doctor is the man, Dr. Steingo. The guy is a, a home being a public vegetarian. If they ask, he will tell you that, but he doesn't recommend it. Mm -hmm. wow. I don't care. Go for it, Yeah. Please? Yeah. Uh, do you have an idea what caused you to have uh, the MLS? Well, oh, no. Down the okay. Yeah, yeah. By accident. Uh, what triggered to have this? Because let me let me tell you something. I uh, for a couple of years ago I had a uh, root canal uh, procedure. And That's since good. that is not good, since that I'm having like some nerve problems. And then I went to a doctor and he was like trying to give me all these kind of uh, pills and I, he did all my tests and everything was good. He couldn't figure out what I had. So he said that I might have fibromyalgia because I'm in fatigue, I'm having all this pain, but I'm telling him, now I have this pain in my left side for the side that I started, since I started with the root canal and so they don't believe that. But I'm pretty sure that everything started with the root canal and it's a nerve pain. Because when I go to uh, acupuncture, it helps, you know, and, and I need to see a chiropractor. And if yeah. I tell this to a doctor, the, the, uh, the conventional doctor, he, that might help. Yeah, might he help. doesn't know. And he said, no, you have to take it this, this med, you know, and he gave me like this med for fibromyalgia. I say, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna take it. I don't take it, you know, because I take once, once, it's like horrible. You feel like a zombie, <laughs> you know, and it doesn't help. Well, like I said, the, uh, the side effects of the drugs they gave me was worse than the MSN. Exactly. <laughs> I'll, th I'll take it back 5,000 years. Are you ready? Ancient Indian medicine? Uh -huh. They're yeah, saying yeah. it was very simple. Okay. When diet is good, medicine's not needed. Yeah. When diet is bad, medicine's of no use. Yeah. The founder of modern medicine, Hippocrates, 2,500 years ago, let food be their medicine, and medicine be their food. The only man to uh, be awarded two Nobel, Nobel Prizes, right, not his fault. Has a great cause. The right diet can solve 95% of all diseases. My suggestion to you is that call it fibromyalgia, call it MS, call it whatever you want, it doesn't matter. Get your diet straight. Get your cabeza on right, your mind, body, and spirit, get your diet straight, put this ball away. Oh yeah, this that I, I noticed because then you, sometimes you freak it out because in the beginning for me that I had this pain, you know, like my, my left side was, was weird, like I couldn't, I had fatigue. But then I noticed, listen, this is like, I'm a vegan so I have to eat more things. Even when you are vegan, sometimes, you know, you mess it up your, your, your diet, you know, and I'm a vegan chef so I cook for all kinds of people, you know, so, so I say, so I, you know, I always notice if I eat more clean, also if I don't stress out, <laughs> you know, if I stress do is an is an ungodly mess. Yeah. Stress is a hit. Stress is a hidden killer. Hidden you don't want stress. Uh, it's rather obvious to me. Maybe don't cook. Maybe your body's spending too much energy on that. Yeah. And also remember, all diseases sell you a malfunction. All cells are meant to function a certain way. If your cells aren't working right, they're not working right. That's all. They give you, here's the regular, this is very heavy, I'm sure she'll agree with you too, okay? It's a medical diagnosis to tell you what pill to take. They match the pill up to the disease, as opposed to the disease to the pill. Which I want to get, I also I can point to facts. I'm at, I'm at the neurologist, okay? They recommend, every all the patients take this drug. Then a week or two later, they take another drug. Because well, the new drug rep has just left. Ah, so how is it? Men, women, all ages, all nationalities can all take the same drug and get well. That doesn't make any sense. And then the drug rep who just sold the new drugs just left, they say they don't get kickbacks. They get free lunches, they get free trips. The, uh, the National Neurologist Association, their big, two years ago, had their yearly contest in Hawaii. 
paid for by Big Pharma. Think of it. Let me, I can't, it's all, it's all knowledge, so it's all right for the internet. Gerard, you're, you're missing the doctors that write the most prescriptions get free Rolexes, free trips. That's it's right. It's not just the drug reps, right. the doctors are getting paid off. Yeah. You're talking about kickbacks. Ms. Dell, you want to ask a question? Yes, uh, yes, please go ahead. We have a question. Okay, um, I do have a question. Now so people know I now have MS. I have relapsing, remitting MS. Forget the labels. Well, Forget it. It's the way it's acting. Sometimes I'm good, sometimes I have bad things. You have a car. Who cares what kind of car? You have a Please. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, have you tried uh, acupuncture? That worked very well for me. I'm just curious if you did. I'm a proponent of rainbow works. So if that works for you, that's great. It's natural, the medication. Yeah, I'm just curious. He did try it. it. I tried it, my body being the black and white kind of body it is. You put the needles in, <laughs> my body spit them out. Okay. It was bizarre just to watch it. Hey, is it ready? And, and I do see <laughs> Dr. Steinberg is my neurologist. I'm sorry. And what I like about him, no, I happen to like him because he does not push medicine, uh, any drug, at least in my experience with him. There was one period where I had about three months of feeling absolutely horrible, no improvement whatsoever. And I am not, obviously, I, I don't care to take any kind of drug either. And I was ready because it was horrible. I felt sick all the time, fatigue. And I went to him and I said, you know I don't like to ask for this. And one of the things they give you is steroids to, you know, get rid of the inflammation. Uh -huh. And he handed me a, a paper, two or three papers of the side effects, and he said, would you hold off, give it another few weeks. If you get to the point where you're just not improving whatsoever, even if you're starting a little improvement, um, then, you know, we're not doing anything. And sure enough, I did start to, to slowly improve. He does give talks and speaks about being vegan, and he talks about diet. So I've gone to Well, there's two parts of that conversation. They may tell you what, you know, what not to do, and that's great, but they tell you what to do. And it's also you recommend well, on the strong vegan diet. Do they stop the dairy products? You may talk about it, but they, do they prescribe that? Like you know, you're using a paint to describe that. Well, like, he tells I him don't him. want to have dairy and cheese and eggs. Therefore, you know, do that. Oh, no. No, and he, he, he does. I've been to his talks. And he's he's not he's I don't know how to put it. I mean he's not critical of people because they're eating that way, but he tells them what's good about not eating that way. So that's my experience with him. One thing you touched on earlier though is uh, about root canals. If you have a root canal in your, in your mouth, get it out. Nothing good, it's only bad stuff. You don't want that in your body. A piece of metal in your gum, you don't want that in your body. Heavy metal toxicity is really bad. You don't want that in your body. Put the back. Who's first? Find it out. Okay, I know. he's bigger. Sir. There's, a, there's a website, a, a, a vegan website, or a not an anti-dairy website, notmilk.com. Oh. And there's there's A to Z under M. Click under multiple sclerosis. Okay. That's about all dairy causes might be the cause of multiple. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yeah. As vegans, we pretty well get that anyway. Yeah. You know? Dairy is uh. All you have to take a bit of look up dairy three hundred but the yeah, casein in dairy. Forget about it. There. Does everybody know how they make cheese? By the way, they take they milk the cow. They skim the fat off the milk. That's how you make cheese. All cheese has mold on there. You ever crumble blue cheese? Put some blue, that's mold. All cheese has mold. All you want to put mold in your body. That's all, all this is mold. All you do that's itself. Yeah, I, I, ladies okay. first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would like to know how you took the decision to go to alternative medicine because normally we have like a program that doctors are the, the ones who rule out, you know, health. We cannot say no or anything because everybody's against us. How are you going to leave the treatment? This and that. How, what makes you take the decision to go to that route? It was totally unique. It's very special. You used to say it was called common sense. You just have no idea what they're doing. When they go to Dasi, it's all, they're making this stuff up. How is it that two doctors, MS specialists, recommend two different drugs to anybody who walks in the door? 
You don't recommend any sort of diet. Then you can't say, how do you put a medicine in the body and who cares about the food? These guys don't know what they're doing. That just, that, for me, it was very easy to say, once I saw that doing something different would get me a different result, it was rather easy. Then I saw the results coming right in. I guess they do know what they're doing. Because my doctor, uh, no, my general physician, he told me, I have to prescribe you that test or I'm in problem. So they've been manipulated. So they know what's going oh, on. Yeah. If they don't do what they pharmacists, they're going to take their license away. No kidding. Is that yeah. what's going on? I agree. That's the fix is the matrix. You also had a, a chiropractor in Fort Lauderdale who he just saw once in a great while. And when he was at 53, he was getting very depressed because he had a neurological disease. He was just getting worse. And that chiropractor said to him, look, you have to do something radical. You have to do something completely different than what you're doing right now. And he suggested that he go to a clinic in uh, Naples for one month where they had a magnetic resonance machine and they had um, a few different kinds of therapies and it wasn't very much, but they were the ones who told him to become vegetarian. And so he, that's when, after Thanksgiving, he decided to become a vegetarian and he started making those changes. But it was that one chiropractor who said, look, you have to do something completely radical, something totally different, otherwise you're just gonna go downhill from here. And he did, and just a little bit of improvement caused him then to be more open to other changes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I just yeah. wanted to comment, Jared. It sounds like you've earned results already. So basically, oh. whatever was working, you kind of pursued. Every time. So um, what what kind of difference did you notice between, uh, the, let's say, vegetarian, vegan, and then raw vegan? Did you notice a massive difference? And then I have a follow-on question. Not, not massive, but I knew it was the right path to go. Like, in inner knowingness, and going to pockets and seeing the results that they have, reading about results of vegan, reading about results of, uh, of raw vegan, and personal experience of raw vegan. Like I described, when I became raw vegan 12 years ago, all MS and raw fatigue was gone, period. So, that was, vegetarian, coming vegetarian was good. I saw my son get me out of bed moving around. Coming vegan was good. Going raw made a whole different self. Results, yeah, that was a big result. Well, I think, I think maybe there's a lot of people that are dealing with this that have not committed to...